In Creo Parametric, you can create a wide variety of patterns in parts and assemblies. In part one, we took a look at dimension, direction, axis, fill, point, and curve patterns. In this video, we'll be taking a look at five more different kinds of patterns, first starting off with a table pattern. So I will select the hole in the model tree, then choose the pattern tool from the mini toolbar. And now I will go to the type dropdown and choose table pattern. And so with a table pattern, like the name sounds, you are going to be selecting different dimensions and have them appear into a table. And you can specify the values for the different instances in that table. And so here I have three different dimensions in this particular feature. Let me select the first one, hold down the control key and select the second one and then control and select the third dimension. Then I will click on the pencil icon in order to edit the table. And this is going to open up pro table editor. It is a bit dated. It is Creo parametrics version of a table editor back from like the 1980s or 1990s. This is one reason why I tend to use point patterns. Instead, they're a little easier than editing this table. But anyhow, let's plug in some different values. I'll type in 50 for this cell and 75. And what's interesting about this table is that you can have any of the different dimensions for the feature, including here we have the diameter dimension. So let's make a slightly bigger diameter and I'll just create a couple more instances very quickly. Let me fill in the index numbers. Then let me plug in some other different values in here. Let's use 140 and I will use a diameter of 16 and let's do 20 and enter in 200 and Let's also do 250. I don't know, that's good. Okay, so there I have the different values. Let me then save and exit out of the table. You can see previews for where the holes will end up. Oops, one ended up in space. I forgot how big this model was. Let me edit that real quick. I think this value was just way too big. Let's enter in a value of 175 instead and save and exit and hit the check mark. And so there we have our holes created in our table. And again, you can see that we are increasing the diameter, we're changing the diameter as well as the dimensions that locate it. One thing about pattern tables is that you do have this separate pattern table command where you can see the different tables that are in your model. And with a pattern table, you can write the tables out to disk and then read them into another part. However, they are not parametric. So again, that is the table pattern. Okay, let's click the OK button out of that dialog box. And I'm gonna select this pattern and then suppress it. Let's go back to a more common kind of pattern. Here I have an axis pattern. The next pattern that we're going to take a look at is something called a reference pattern. So I have this existing pattern in the model. Now I'm going to create a, another feature on top of one of the members of this pattern. So I'll click an edge and then let's choose the round tool and it's got a radius of two. I am fine with that. Let's hit the check mark. So there I have the round feature created. And while it is still selected in the model tree and in the graphics area, I can hold down the right mouse button and choose the pattern command. And it recognizes that this is a feature that is located on an existing instance, so I can create a reference pattern. Now, in other words, I can place this pattern on top of the original pattern. That is a reference pattern. Let me hit the check mark. Now all those different members have the pattern. Be aware that you can also reference pattern at the assembly level. So here I have an assembly. It's got one part, this plate. Let's assemble in a bolt. And so I will choose the assemble command. Let me grab a bolt. And then let's select a cylindrical surface from the bolt and a cylindrical surface. And let me choose the flat planar surface. And I will query select to the flat planar surface on the bottom. I got a coincident constraint. 
and it is allowing assumptions. I'm going to hold down the middle mouse button, and there we have the bolt placed in the model. If I click on the bolt, well, I can choose the pattern command from the mini toolbar, and I can place that bolt in all the different members of the pattern that it was assembled to. So that is how you reference pattern at the assembly level. Okay, let's hop back over to the previous model and I'm going to suppress that whole feature for what I'm going to show next. And let's suppress the pattern of the rounds as well. I'm gonna roll the part over to the other side of the model. And I have a bunch of features over here. If I expand the boss group in the model tree, you can see that it consists of a sketch, an extrude, a couple of holes, and a round feature. And those have been grouped together. Well, you can group, excuse me, you can pattern a group. So for example, I can click onto the boss feature and then choose to create a pattern. And by default, it is giving me a dimension pattern. Let me use the right mouse button to get a direction pattern. And for the first direction, I always like to choose surfaces if I have those available, as opposed to edges. And let's choose a distance of 50. And let's create eight instances in the first direction. And let's define a second direction. I will click in the collector and just for, uh, let's select this flat planar surface and then let's just drag it in the other direction. And let's do a value of 50 and a total number of instances four and then hit the check mark. And so in that way, we have patterned multiple features at once by patterning the group. So it's not its own separate command, but it is a, an example of another kind of pattern that you can create. Okay, so that is good for that one, but you'll notice that this took a little bit of time to regenerate because it had to build all those individual features and then regenerate them. There's another option that you can use instead, and that is called a geometry pattern. So let's select this existing pattern, which is a feature pattern, and I will delete the pattern and get back to my original features. And with a geometry pattern, that command is accessed from the ribbon, but you'll notice it is grayed out. Like I had discussed before, with these different pattern commands, they are object action, which means you have to select your geometry or your features first, and then the commands are available. And so with the geometry pattern, I need to select my geometry first. And so to select all the different surfaces from this boss, I'm going to use a an advanced selection method called seed and boundary. I'm gonna select one surface, hold down the shift key and then grab another surface. And that ends up grabbing all the different surfaces from the seed surface until it encounters the boundary. I have a video on advanced selection techniques. But after I select all those different surfaces in the mini toolbar, I have access to the geometry pattern command, or you can get to it from the ribbon and choose geometry pattern. And then it looks just like a regular pattern command. You'll notice that dimension is grayed out because this is just geometry. It doesn't have dimensions like a feature does, but all the other different types are available. Well, reference pattern isn't available because this is not created on top of an existing pattern. So once again, let's choose a direction pattern. Let me choose as my first reference, this surface, and let's use the same values as before, 50, and then create eight instances in that direction. For the second direction, let me pick this surface. And let me drag it, let me just plug in a negative value, negative 50 and four in that direction. I can exactly see where the drag handle was. So I decided that I would just plug in a negative value. And so now let me hit the check mark. 
And this regenerated a whole lot faster because geometry patterns don't have to regenerate each individual feature. And so that is another kind of pattern they have. So there you have it, five more different kinds of patterns. I hope this helps you, especially if you are new to Creo Parametric.